Hello, in this series of videos we're going to be looking at how we deal with non-ideal behavior. So this comes from a few different sections in your textbook, not just one section. Um, but I like to sort of tackle these ideas all together because they are related to each other. Um, the two concepts we're going to be talking about are fugacity and activity, which are very similar concepts. Um, fugacity um, applies to gases and is the way we sort of account for non-ideal behavior in gases. Um, and activity is how we deal with it in uh, solutions and condensed phases. Uh, but primarily we think about this in terms of solutions. So this could also apply to say solids and liquids. Um, but typically we think about activity as, as being a um, something associated with solutions. Um, fugacity and activity are sort of analogous to pressure and concentration. And with activity, I, I'll just leave that in general. Uh, not uh, It can be in lots of different concentration units. Um, so let's, we'll start with fugacity and let's explain sort of why we need to include this and how it gets included in our thermodynamic functions. So if we go back to chapter 22, uh, we showed that we can write, for an ideal gas, we can write down the value of g-bar, which again for a pure substance is the same as the chemical potential, um, as a function of temperature and pressure. Uh, we derive this equation, that this is equal to the standard g at a given temperature, right, and, and this is for a given temperature and pressure, uh, plus rt log p over p naught. And just as a reminder where this came from, uh, we integrated this partial derivative dg bar d, dp a constant t is equal to v bar um, and this just comes from the definition not from the definition but it comes from um, right the fact that g dg equals minus sdt plus vdp and this partial derivative is equal to the volume so if we integrate this from p naught may be consistent about this p naught to p on both sides um, and we make a substitution we substitute um, v bar equals rt over p um, then we get this expression that if we integrate the, the um, if we integrate what's on the right we get rt log p over p naught okay so and that's where this expression up here comes from now a key part here is that we assume ideal gas behavior here, right? This, this expression is only true for an ideal gas. Um, and what if we want to think about gases that don't behave ideally? Maybe it's something that follows the Van der Waals equation or the redlich chuang equation. Um, we're at really high pressures or lower temperatures and we're getting closer to liquid behavior. Uh, then this equation doesn't work so neatly anymore, right? Then we would need to have a different expression for V-bar and it won't be something quite so simple, right? We'd have to use like the Van der Waals equation. And then our functional form here is not gonna be as simple as RT log P, right? We're gonna get something different. But we'd like to keep this general functional form, we want like the functional form to look the same for both the ideal and non-ideal behaviors. So what we do is we, we define a new function that sort of behaves like a pressure, but is not actually pressure, but I think of it as an effective pressure, right? So we call this the fugacity, and we give it the symbol F. Uh, and this is an effective pressure. And we define fugacity such that uh, the value of the molar Gibbs energy is equal to the standard value plus RT log f over f naught. So we switch from p to f here. And again, f here is a function of temperature and pressure. So what's useful about this is now we still have the same functional form where we have the RT natural log of the fugacity now instead of the pressure. Um, and that means many of the other equations that we can derive from the ideal gas law uh, based form still apply. And this is particularly useful for equilibrium because uh, we start from this point to show that, you know, how we can write equilibrium constants. 
it allows us to take wherever we would have pressure in an expression, we can switch for fugacity. So what we're going to look at in the next video is how do we figure out what the fugacity is for a given gas.